All right, the next one. What is this one? The next one's from Ray's Guide, uh, and it's titled Star Citizen, Why Your 2023 Predictions Are All Wrong. Okay. Um, this is a little, uh, it's a weird title to me because it's, it's like why mine is right, maybe. Um, but pretty good bait, I think. So let's click it. Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and it seems to be a standard among Star Citizen YouTubers to make a start of the year look ahead video. And I've been looking at more than a few of them and have come to the conclusion that they're all wrong. And I'm going to start with my own predictions by saying that my first prediction about 2023 is that my predictions will be wrong. Okay. Except, of course, the prediction that I would be wrong, which would then be right, and perhaps the only prediction that I was right on. I did go into prediction video about 2022, and yes, it was mostly wrong, and only a little bit right, which if you look by comparison, the prediction video did about something presumably far more complex, the 2022 supply and prices for graphics card, turned out to be spot on. And if you listen to what I said about NFTs, you most likely did get out in time. So it's not that I'm bad at making predictions. It's that last year was a bad time to be trying to make predictions about star season. And next year isn't going to be any better. Imagine, in fact, that my 2022 predictions had been great. Imagine if a year ago I said that in less than a year's time, even before server meshing, that we would be regularly playing on 150 person servers and not really having a problem with it. You would have certainly called me crazy and said that my prediction was ridiculous. If a year ago I said that a server event would more than double the size of Orison and have us dropping tanks out of Hercules onto city platforms, you would have had the same reaction, calling me crazy and that I was being ridiculous in my predictions. And yet, Siege of Orison certainly would have already been under early development. If I had predicted at the start of 2022 that even the simplest of server meshing and pyro wouldn't be arriving until the end of 2023, I would have been labeled a pessimistic hater. And yet, here we are. So it wasn't that my predictions about 2022 were wrong, but everybody's was wrong. And we had no clue about the defining events of 2022. Yes. And this video is about why we are not likely to be doing much better in our predictions for this year. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of why I, I haven't really made a prediction video very much. Um, at least not the traditional one, like this year's going to suck, because we have no information. Um, previous years, we had a lot of information with roadmaps and other things like that. Uh, this year, we don't have a lot of information because we don't, we don't, we, we're not going to be able to predict anything because we don't have the information at all. They've said literally nothing um, outside of well, next year's going to suck because Chris Roberts said server meshing at the end of the year. So why has Star Citizen entered a phase of being so difficult to predict? Based on the letters from the chairman, even Chris Roberts is having trouble predicting it. First and foremost, the Squadron Curtain. So much of the resources in development are now exclusively dedicated to Squadron 42, and most of that is shrouded in secrecy. So there is this massive cadre of developers working on things, some of which we have been told a little about, and some being kept mysterious deliberately. But there is more than just, Not some, most. just whether these features are finished. We've been told that when they are finished with features, they will be moved intact and completed to the persistent universe. CIG has followed this company message partly because it makes the road ahead look much easier and... I am, I am distracted by Ray's piloting. It's terrible. I'm sorry, Ray. And partly because it assures backers that are only interested in the persistent I'm universe bad. that all their money being spent on Squadron 42 is not being wasted from their standpoint. And much of that is true. Things like interaction systems, sounds, graphic systems, props, settings, planets, etc. are all common to both and easily transferred from one to the other. But with other things, particularly gameplay systems, there is a hard reality that's being soft played. Squadron isn't just the single player version of the Persistent Universe, and the Persistent Universe isn't just a multi-user version of Squadron. They aren't just separate games. They are different game genres. A single player, military focused, linear storyline RPG is a completely different genre than a massively multiplayer, multi-civilian career, open world sandbox. 
not everything is going to jump over from one to the other neatly. Many will need to be reworked and adjusted, and some shouldn't even be tried to be moved over at all. So let me take one example of something some are saying might be making an appearance in the PU in the next year. Master modes. Many backers are hearing... I don't think so. ...hearing statements that the developers have finally dialed in the perfect solution and think that it will be here soon. Put it on my list for 2023, they say. But what you might have missed on the Star Citizen Live on Master Modes is that they are only testing it for the ships in Squadron 42 and the missions of Squadron 42. And since programmers and testers are naturally curious folks, if they say that they are only looking at Squadron 42 ships, it means that they have been ordered to only look at Squadron 42 ships. And their yep. claims to have found a solution means that they have found a solution for Squadron 42. Now, how much of an absurd... That's just... Ob like, that is just not true, though, what he's saying here. Because that is not the words that came out of their mouth. Like, they are ordered to work on Squadron 42 exclusively and those specific ships, but they have come on camera and said that they found a solution for Star, C Star Citizen Squadron 42. They talked about racing. They talked about all these things, not Squadron 42 related. So... I'm going to hard um, say just you are completely wrong in that statement. But the focus right now is dialing in the Squadron 42 ships within the master mode system that they feel is the solution to all their problems right now. Optimist, would you need to be before they to think work on all that the, the other solution ships. for, let's say, seven ships operating in a narrow scope of missions is also going to be untouched. The solution for a hundred and seven ships operating in entirely different mission scopes. So rather than it being the start of yes, because they literally said it was, it's the same solution, but it's the balance of you know the balancing act of okay, well, this ship's going to have this. You know, these stats, this one's going to have those stats, and it's, it's a lot of work with hundreds of ships to do all that work, and that's what they're going to do. Master modes in the PU, it will be the start and that's of what's discovering take so long. how master They've modes literally said don't that. work in the PU and how they will need to be altered. But since they won't be going back and altering the perfect solution for Squadron 42, they will be trying to alter it for the PU. I just don't know how Ray can go into this stating that you know, everyone's making predictions, but they don't necessarily have the information to make those predictions and then do the exact same thing in his own video. You in ways that can be paper, but with situations where we actually have the information because they told us over as the difference between military and civilian operations and the slight difference in time periods between the two games. But if you are expecting a simple drop in from Squadron 42 to the PU of master modes or many other things, no. then you will likely be disappointed. The other thing that makes Star Citizen notoriously difficult to predict right now is trying to figure out what is blocking what. And this may be a case of where a lot of predictors may be overly pessimistic. For example, right now we have two big blocker technologies being worked on, persistent ND streaming and server meshing. And we're going to be getting persistent ND streaming first because server meshing is itself being blocked by persistent ND streaming. But when you look at things on the horizon, I see some predictors saying that everything is going to be laid by the delay in server meshing, the right bubble here, when in fact much of it is only being blocked by persistent entity streaming, the left bubble. Those things in the left bubble don't have to... It's kind of interesting because their communication on the, the first Roberts letter was what Ray is saying, like... So much of the work to make server meshing has happened, uh, is being done by PES. And now that tone definitely felt like it's changed in the second Roberts letter. I think they have a bit more information now that they've developed PES uh, quite a bit further since that time. Because uh, that time was like, hey, we tried it on the server, it worked. Now we have to integrate it all. Um, so since all that, it, their tone seems to have changed. To wait for quite server a bit. meshing. Yet I see plenty of people believing that everything is being blocked by server meshing and pyro. So generally speaking, how do you know which to put in each of these bubbles? Well, if it needs large player counts and really large areas of operation, then it is in the right bubble. But if what it needs is- Bro, what the hell? The entire game 
is large player counts and large areas. I, I'm having a hard time not getting ups upset at this. That is why everybody says the entire game is blocked by this. We have a terrible user experience with AI hitching, server crashing, uh, desync, blah, blah, blah. Like name, you could name a hundred more things that are related to server load. What removes the server load? What removes all the excuses works on my server by the by the CIG developers when we say we're having all these bugs and all these issues? Well, can't reproduce them because it's not happening on my server. It's the right bubble. That's why everybody has got their mind on the right bubble. Longer but I'll let him continue. I mean, maybe he's going to continue on something else. But if the game needs this, which literally the entire game needs it, like I, somebody in the example is saying a cutter doesn't need it. Right? It does, though, because to use your cutter to experience the game, you need it. To fly down to a bunker, you need it. So I'm going to roll back because somebody said, I want to hear examples. So do I. But I can't help myself but stop there and be like, like, what are you talking about? This is why people feel they need these things. Generally speaking, how do you know which to put in each of these bubbles? Well, if it needs large player counts and really large areas of operation, then it is in the right bubble. But if what it needs is longer multi-session game loops, then the thing that has been blocking it is PES. And presumably, it can be started to roll out in a pre-4.0 patch. So what falls under that category? Some possibility. But you can take this further. Because... A lot of the longer term gameplay loops don't exist because they're not willing to work on them until they have a f the foundational tech in the game. So it's still being blocked by server meshing, even though it's not dependent on server meshing. So maybe this is just a syntax issue where he's using the word blocked instead of dependent. Right? They're not going to work on it. It's not dependent on it. Um, they're They're... It's not prioritized because they don't want to have to redo work to work within a server meshed environment. These are cargo missions and other further development of the cargo systems, bounty hunting where you have to actually catch and deliver the target, kidnapping missions, essentially the less respectable form of that, the remaining types of salvage, in order to process component extraction, fluids and gas removal, and frame grinding and refining. Ship armor, component level damage, failure and repair, towing, more extensive repair, the resource management. All of these things are blocked by server meshing. Every single thing. Because we can't put these things in the game in the current environment that we have. The system, data running, and others. Technically speaking, none of those require server meshing, but all of them require a lot of complex things need to stay in or about your ship or wreck from one game session to the next. In other words, persistence. Does this mean that all those things are going to pop in with release immediately following 3.18? No, there isn't enough programmers, point, which though, brings up the next mystery that is making Star Citizen hard to predict. What is the rest of CIG been preparing for? Some might expect that none of these things they began to work with until persistent Andy streaming is a reality. But that is not how complex software projects are done. You see, the very first thing that's done with a code module, such as persistent entity streaming for a feature, is that they develop and publish an interface specification that will say what okay. the module is capable of doing and how you make requests to and pass information to it and what will be the format and results of the information that comes from it. Think okay. of it like the architectural plans for a building, which the actual builders, the programmers, will then create the building to match. But with the plans in hand, you don't have to wait for the building to be completed before planning what furniture and equipment you're going to put in with it and how you're going to make use of the building. Like, I think Rev Ray is a software developer, right? So, like, he has these experiences and he's able to think the way they do. But I can only go based off of what they say. And what they've said is, like, we don't want to make really complex or or really dive into missions that we really want to do for you guys until we're in a server meshed environment. That was literally said by Luke Presley like four years ago, maybe more, right? So it's, 
it's one of these things where they've had to redo their work for, um, oh, what was it? Like object container streaming. And then had to redo their work for ser- uh, persistent entity streaming. And then have to redo their work for this, that, and the other thing. So, like, I get he knows what he's talking about. But at the same time, it, it's... I think the way he's communicating it is in a in a way that is just odd because they're they're not you know I my understanding of it is has always been how do you make this this idea of how their software will work if you don't know the limitations of your engine right and that's what they're constantly working towards now so you won't actually be able to move in of course but you can do a lot to be ready to move in. So what have they been preparing? What has the they rest of the development staff they don't know been the scope doing of the while waiting, just like we have for 3.18? Because as we should now well know, development is specialized. And the network and database programmers behind persistent end streaming and server meshing are only a few of the many disciplines that are essentially waiting on them. What have they been working on? Pet projects like racetracks or side projects like shipwrecks or, well, what? Anyway, we'll get our first indications of what the answers to these questions will be when they finally send 3.18 to live this and add crazy, another release way. to the progress tracker. In the meantime, so all I can say about 2023 is that it's likely to be a year alternating between surprising and frustrating. Yes. Either way, as always, my touchstone will always be to have fun already. Now, for an update on our ship giveaways. First, we have the waiting for 3. I think... Um... I, I can definitely agree with that. I think if we look back at every other year we've had, I think features have come out of the blue that have been like kind of exciting features or quite fun. And then usually we're waiting for those foundational features like server meshing that never happen. So frustrating, exciting. Um, and I'm definitely taking the the uh, the idea of what Ray said at the end there. I'm just going to try to have fun with what I have and... That's sort of why I'm trying not to play so much right now because I don't want to ruin my fun for the 318 live experience. So, been doing like more reacting on Twitch and and uh, playing other games for right now while 318 still in testing. 318 piloting skills contest for the most amazing landing of a ship Hercules size or larger for your choice of the Crusader Spirit Series ships. See the link That's in the description. That's a cool for giveaway. That. There's still a lot of possibilities to be explored. And then there is the Grow the Channel ship giveaway for the winner's choice of the Galaxy Complete, the multi-role mining moving medical machine, or that Banu big box bargain bazaar, the Merchant Man. One entry per video, current members, enter automatically as always, and everyone... Points taken off for putting landing gear up and then taking it down. Else just subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what I use as an example of what may not be quite so smooth a transition from Squadron 42 to the Persistent Universe. Fly safe, keep it real, I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide. Yeah, I mean, that that is an interesting look at it from Ray. I, I just, that's the thing that I, maybe just like the way he explained it is what I have a hard time with. Because everything, uh, you know, PES touches everything, server messaging touches, touches everything. So literally everything is being held up by both of those things because again how do you figure out the scope of your game from a mission team from uh any of the other like how many outposts can we have how many how many npcs can we have there how detailed can we make these npcs how much can we make them do how many ships can we land from npcs how complex can we make our missions without knowing the the limitations of what your game can do you can't figure that out without having that foundational tech in. So literally how I look at it is everything is being blocked and everything that we have now is just placeholder until then. They don't care. They don't care to work on it hard. They don't care to to put in a, a, a complete polished experience because they can't. Because how do you polish something when you don't know what it, it's going to be able to do? So it was just a weird way of explaining it. And I'm sorry if I like got really upset, but it's just like, what I, I I can't comprehend that for somebody who follows the project more than I do, probably uh, with Ray. He seems very not only like on top of things and what they're talking about, but he knows what he's talking about. Right. Where I don't. And I still just it's a concept I can't understand. I'm not saying I'm right. He's wrong. I'm saying this is how I see it. And I don't see his point of view. I can't understand his point of view. 
you know? So it's kind of... I also, like, sort of get where he's going is, like, obviously none of these things can work without PES, but they're not willing to polish them and make them good without server meshing. So it's both. That's just how I look at it. But thank you for the video, Ray. Uh, let me link it to all you guys. Ray's a great YouTuber. So make sure you go over there and subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet.